Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, can you tell us what are the plans of DOST as far as Global Innovation Index is concerned? Because, you know, we have already uh, raised no? our rank. And what are in the pipeline right now? In the pipeline right now is the implementation of the Innovative Startup Act. We have found that there are some gaps in the programs being offered by the government. This is combination of DOST, DTI, and DICT that addresses some of the needs of these young innovators. So we plan to plug the gaps and we plan to roll this out starting April. And we imagine that if we have more startups doing innovation, then we will move up the value chain, uh, the GII index. Yeah. What do you think uh, made us rose from the ranks in One terms of, the, of yeah. yeah. First of all, we invested heavily in human resource. We have lots of scholarships now compared to like 10 years ago. And I think that is the reason why we are number 18 in terms of graduates in science and engineering. And in the last four years, by the way, DOST has been producing 400 to 500 graduates of master's and PhD. Those are inputs to the innovation. And then second of all, we have put up all of these facilities so that people can do R&D all over the country, not just here in Metro Manila. For example, we used to have one Philippine Genome Center in UP Diliman. But now we have opened Philippine Genome Center in Mindanao. And in April, we will open Philippine Genome Center in Visayas because more and more researchers are coming there. These are young people, young people with new PhDs who would like to do R&D. But before, if they come home, there's no facility for them. But now, because we have built these facilities, there's a reason for them to innovate. Yeah. Well, what are your message to our young people, Yusek? I hope that our innovators will use their discarte to figure out what are the problems that are pressing to solve those kinds of pressing problems that uses innovation. We believe that just doing R&D with no application or end user in mind would be a waste of resources. We prefer that you do R&D to address a particular problem. And if you do that, there is a possibility for you to get funding from the Department of Science and Technology. Yeah, in terms of uh, service, uh, government services, uh, what is the role of uh, DOST? In terms of government services, we have laboratories that perform tests. We have researchers that can do contract research from our research and development institutions. And we have grants system and also what we call venture financing from the Technology Application Promotion Institute. All of this can help from R&D all the way to the pre-commercialization of innovative products, services, and processes. Yeah, Secretary Peña mentioned a while ago that uh, the DOST needs more funding, uh, budget, right? Uh, any message to the Good Samaritans there or uh, angel donors or our lawmakers? First of all, for the lawmakers, in the Philippine Development Plan, the plan is that by 2022, we will have GDP expenditure on R&D to be 0.5%. We're currently at 0.14 to 0.18, and that has not moved. While the R&D funding has increased, the denominator, which is the GDP, has increased faster. So we will need funding to be increased by 50% per year so that we will reach 0.5 in about six years' time at the rate that we are going. Secondly, we need private investors to come in. One of the things that I notice is that we have approached what we call our industry captains, and they are receptive to adopting some of the technologies that we have. And our hope is that we will find more and more of this, what we call nationalistic or those who understand that this is the need of the Filipinos, nobody will invest in it, and they will invest in it. And these are technologies that we feel are really needed by the country. Yeah. Any message to the Filipino people? Innovation is key, and Philippine innovation will help us land in the global market.